Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video. Now the Market Golf has been receiving rave reviews about the way that it drives since it was launched in early 2020, but pretty much everybody has disliked the new buttonless user interface. Apart from me, it seems I've had no problems with it at all. I first drove a Market Golf in June 2020 and I had that car for quite a few days and got to know the system very well. It wasn't perfect by any means, but weirdly, when I gave that car back, it was a bit I missed most when I got into my Mark 7.5 Golf GTI TCR. I've driven loads of Mark 8s since then, and each time it gets better and better. That's partly due to software updates dealing with bugs, but also due to the fact I know the system even more and have learned quite a few tips and tricks that make living with it a lot easier. There are many well-respected reviewers that aren't aware of these shortcuts and will bang on repeatedly about how functions are very hard to find because they're buried deep in the menus when really they're just a slide away if you configure the system to suit your needs. So today, to make sure you have a good experience with your market golf, I want to share with you 10 tips that will make living with it a lot easier. Okay guys, starting off then at number 10, my first tip is that you sign up for the free VW WeConnect app. Once you do that from your smartphone, you can find out things like how much fuel is in your car, whether it's locked or unlocked. You can even operate the horn and the turn signals to find it in a big car park. You can get driving data, just like having the trip computer on your phone. You can even get a vehicle health report. Yeah, lots of green ticks there, thankfully. But most importantly, there is a map option which will show you exactly where your car is. Now, I know you probably know where your car is, but if it's stolen, you won't. And that's a particularly big risk with GTIs and Rs. This function was available on 7.5 Golf when it had the SOS button up here like that, which is only probably the last couple of years of production. But the problem with 7.5 is that a switched on thief could delete the user, which would render the app useless. On the Mark 8, there is now a PIN number you have to put in pretty much every time you get in the car. I think if you, don't, if you do get in the car again within say half an hour, you don't need to put it in. Yes, it is a bit annoying having to put a PIN in every time, but at least it means I know that if the car's stolen, there's a good chance I'll be able to track it with the app. Now, a little tip is to keep an eye on this icon here, the globe and the little bloke sitting on a pin, really. The globe being white there means that the car is connected to the Volkswagen servers. The data is moving between them. And that little pointer there means that the car is giving out its location. So this is all fine. If you get a new car, you might find there's a picture of a man with a hat and glasses on. And that means that the car is not giving out any data. You might also find that it's not connecting to the servers. So it could take a bit of tinkering to get that working. But yeah, that's a really cool function. Okay, at number nine, my next tip is that you disable the keyless entry system of your Market Golf if you're not happy with it operating because it could be a security risk. Now, Mark 7 Golf saw keyless entry introduced and it became standard whether you wanted it or not on the last couple of years of production. That was particularly bad timing because thefts exploiting the weakness of keyless entry were at their peak when that happened. And the problem with 7.5 Golf was that you couldn't disable the system satisfactorily at all. The good news is with Mark 8, it's really easy to do that. Let me show you how. So go into vehicle and then you want central locking. And there you are. You can keyless entry, keyless access, active or not active. It's your call. If you deactivate it, you just open the car with the remote as you probably did on your old car and you press the start button to start it so that stays the same. If you're really happy with keyless entry and you like how it works, which you know there are some parts of the country where that will be the case, you can actually set the car to unlock when you approach the car, which means you just walk past it, just walk up to the car and it will lock without you having to touch the handle, which is, I've got to admit, actually pretty cool. Okay, at number eight, my next tip is that you make sure you've got the latest version of the software for the infotainment system because this is crucial to it working smoothly and efficiently. You can find out which version you've got very easily. So click on settings and then system information and there is the software version. I'm on 1666. 
which is not the latest version. I gather there is a 1668, which is much, much better. Don't even think about pressing the update software version there because that does not work, which is doubly annoying because you need the update to fix problems and you try and fix it and it doesn't work. I don't know what VW were thinking with that, but get yourself booked in to the dealer, get a courtesy car, get them to do the update, and you should have a car that pretty much works like you'd expect a Volkswagen to work, which can't be a bad thing, can it? Okay, at number seven, let's talk about the haptic buttons on the steering wheel, because much like the infotainment system, not everybody likes these. Now, haptic just means touch sensitive and they give a bit of feedback as well. Some people say they don't work properly. Well, honestly, I've never had a problem with them. They just take a bit of finesse to use. So let me show you them working properly. So with this digital, digital instrument cluster, we've got three sections. The two outer bits can be configured using these buttons. So I'm going to go up now. I'm going to select driving time distance. OK, that's working fine. I'm going to go across to the left side. I want to select, I don't know, assist system. So two down and that's working fine as well. I might want to scroll through the different stations on the stereo. I'll just reconfigure this to show radio, audio. There we are, easy. So you can see that there, I might want to go through the different stations. And there you go, it's changing. Now the other good thing about haptic is that you can slide some of these as well. So if you just want to slide through the station, you can do that. And that's actually probably more useful with the volume. So you can press it to go up and down like that. But you can also slide, which is quite a nice touch. The other good thing about this system is that some of the buttons have got two stages to them. So this one's probably the most important because it sets the cruise speed. So if you press it lightly, the cruise speed goes up one mile an hour at a time. Can you see it just down there? 63, 64, 65. If you press it more heavily, it'll go up to 70, 75, 80. So two presses, listen for the two presses. It's on to 70. On the old system, it would work in a similar way, but to get five mile an hour increment, you'd have to hold the button down, which took time. On this, I'm up five instantly just by pressing it a little bit more firmly. Okay, at number six, let's talk about the voice control function that's standard on Mark 8 Golf. You have to pay a lot of money for this with some manufacturer's cars, and it's standard on this car. And once you get to know what you can do with it, it's really cool. You can use it by pressing that button on the steering wheel there, or the cool way of doing it is just to say, hello, Volkswagen. How can I help? I'm cold. No problem. It will get warmer at the front right shortly. And it does know I'm in the driver's seat because if you do it from that seat, it says it will get warmer at the front left. OK, at number five, my tip is to make sure you use the inbuilt instruction manual in the infotainment system. The Golf 8 does come with a paper manual, but this is much easier to use and find the bits you really need. So to do that, scroll up and take help. And there you can see all the little options for finding out how to set the system to suit your needs. C Custom's a really good one because that tells you how to change things to just suit how you want them to be. The beauty of Golf 8 is that it is really configurable, something we've been really craving for in cars up to this point. But because it's configurable, it means there's a lot of options for you to make it how you want it to be. So be sure to spend a bit of time when you're not driving, sit in the car, go through this manual and just set the car up exactly how you want it. OK, number four, let's talk about one of the most controversial bits of the Golf 8, the lack of climate control knobs and buttons. Instead of knobs and buttons, you get the climber button there, which takes you into this climate control screen where you can adjust it as you want. The benefit of having a digital interface is that you get all these other options like smart climate and air care, which you couldn't do if it had knobs and buttons. But this classic climate is the equivalent of the old interface. And there's a better way of accessing it than pressing climber. For me, I press here on the temperature display 
and that takes you into the screen, your fingers right by the control here, which not many people probably know you can actually do that on, press up and down, or you can slide it, and that's quite nice to do when you're driving because you can press your finger against the, against the screen positively and adjust it how you want. The sliders down here are pretty controversial because they're not lit, but my view on these is that they're designed for the passengers. We get one each side because it's cheaper to make the screen for left-hand drive and right-hand drive market. So if you look at them as only for your passengers, they make a lot more sense. The good news is the climate control system in the Golf 8 is pretty efficient. If you set it to 22, in most situations, you don't touch it. I've had this car for two months and I very rarely adjust the climate control anyway. Okay, at number three, let's talk about the operation of the paddle shifters, because there are a couple of functions that you may not know about because they're not immediately obvious. One of them is quite important. One of them is a bit of fun. Let's start off then with the important one. Now, because there's no sort of manual mode on the shifter like there was on the old cars, because it's a shift by wire, when you go into manual mode on the paddles, it does tend to stay in it for quite a long time. In fact, you can permanently stay in it depending on how you're driving, which mode you're in, if you're in sport mode. And that can maybe be a bit annoying or if you press the paddle by mistake. I've heard about people driving these cars and they don't know how to get out of manual mode. So the car's like not even changing gear, it's like in second gear and it's going up to the, the rev limiter. Um, so yeah, the little tip, which is not new for Mark 8, but it's much more important, is that you hold the right hand paddle, the upshifter, towards you for about a second and the car will automatically go into drive, so fully automatic mode. Now that's been on cars for a long time. Some of them have got have had off on the paddle like Golf 8 does. Some of them have not had off, but still done it. But it's a really useful tip that applies to some of the older cars as well. What doesn't apply to the older cars is that if you hold the downshift paddle for about a second, we're in number seven now, top gear, the seventh gear. If you hold this down, for a second or so, it goes to the lowest possible gear. I call it attack mode. That's pretty cool, is it not? Okay, at number two, my second best tip with the Market Golf is to do with this little button on the end of the indicator stalk. Now, you can't actually see that when you're sat here, which probably means you'll never ever notice it's there, but it's quite important because if you're not a big fan of lane assist and some of the other assist systems, you just press that and you can get rid of lane assist really easily by just doing that, pressing OK on the steering wheel. The other way of doing it is to press this and then you get into this menu and it's, it's much harder. The other way as well is to go into the main screen, which will just drive you mad if you have to do that every time because on Mark 8, lane assist is on every time you start the car. You do have to manually turn it off every time. But yes, make sure you use that stalk and don't drive yourself mad. Okay, at number one, my top tip for the Golf 8 user interface is to make sure you use the command center or shortcut menu. It is just a slide away wherever you are in the system. And here, you can choose your four most popular commands. And these are configurable from quite a large selection. So just hold that down and it gives you all these options here. So say you're a car journalist, you can have ESC up there. So just drag that over to air recirculate, which is pretty pointless. And then let go of it. And as you can see now, in the shortcut menu, you've got ESC. So that's accessible really, really quickly. And I can even demonstrate that to you while I'm driving. Okay, now let me show you how easy it is to do the ESC while you're driving. So this is my favorite little road. Um, I'm gonna do, it's a 60 mile now. We can do, we can do 50. So pull down that screen, press ESC, ESC, should we go fully off? Confirm, bong, fully off. Let's uh, put it back on again and 
there we go it's back on again let's turn it off let's just do ESC Sport which is a bit easier ESC Sport ready for my favourite corners I actually would never turn them off on this road because you just don't know what's around the corner but if you want to it really isn't difficult oh god and when you drive this car like this and you get full use of it, it's wonderful wonderful chassis you kind of forget all its little foibles um, you know it can be distracting if you use it irresponsibly but that's the same with putting a cassette into a car in the 1980s you know you just have to be careful when you're looking at the screen but if you get to know it you use the shortcuts it really isn't that distracting that often anyway guys i hope you've enjoyed this Volks wizard video if you have please give it a thumbs up as ever please do comment please do share please do subscribe and i'll see you for the next one hopefully very soon.